In July 1958, two months after Vice President Richard Nixon was taunted and pelted with rocks and trash, and his limousine smashed by baseball bats in Caracas, Venezuela, during an ill-fated goodwill tour through South America, a 37-year-old first-term member of Congress from Oregon drew an enthusiastic crowd of 20,000 who cheered his every word at a political rally at the Nuevo Circo Bullring in the Venezuelan capital. This reception was hardly unique. Representative Charles Porter had just drawn effusive crowds in Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, Panama, and Colombia. How did a political neophyte who barely spoke a word of Spanish become an overnight sensation, earning the moniker Latin America's representative in the U.S. Congress? What resonated so well was Porter's championing of democracy and his searing criticism of Washington's coddling of brutal, corrupt dictatorships, such as Fulgencio Batista, Anastasio Somoza, and Rafael Trujillo. Nixon, who chalked up his hostile reception to communist agitators, scarcely left the U.S. Embassy for the duration of his visit, canceling much of his itinerary and cutting short his stay. The vice president needed a superabundant military escort just to leave the country. So concerned was Dwight Eisenhower about the safety of the vice president, his wife Pat, and the rest of their entourage, that he rattled sabers by dispatching 1,000 Marines and paratroopers from North Carolina to Guantanamo and Ramey Air Force Base in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, and ordered the Navy to send six destroyers a missile cruiser, and an aircraft carrier to the area. By comparison, Representative Porter's visit was a love-in. His jam-packed schedule featured wide-ranging interviews with the press and a local television station and meetings with leaders of the major political parties, the president of the provisional junta, labor organizers, and the Venezuelan Chamber of Commerce. In addition, he participated in a three-hour roundtable at the Central University, a notorious leftist hotbed where anti-American feelings ran high and two campus dormitories bore the nicknames Stalingrad I and II. No matter, the opinionated Oregonian gave as good as he got, and while Nixon's meetings were held at the embassy for security reasons, Porter according to one local newspaper account, sampled comida criolla, native cuisine, and met with Venezuelans in their own element 